tâm tạo sự bình thường Tự dư Việc lợi Cho nên khi One of the Great statesmen Has said The birth Is sorrow The death is sorrow Therefore Remain awake. Buddha birth is blessed, and blessed is his death. Blessed is the teaching of the way. It comes to the mind. Can we celebrate the birth of a Buddha? Normally what happens when we are engaged in a celebration, certain festivities take place. There is merry making. But when a Buddha celebrates, he shares his energy, shares his love, shares his understanding, shares his being. Once you are born and then one day you attain to innerness or total awakening, then even birth becomes blessed. Only then you are blessed you are the cosmos. Transformation is possible. Now that which is, is light. Light cannot be contained. It goes on radiating. Beauty and fragrance overflows. Therefore the coming of the Buddha into the world is a blessing to the world. Coming of a Buddha to your life is a blessing, indeed both to himself and to others as well. Blessed is his teachings of the way. As the fragrance overflows, bees gather and then spontaneously it starts teaching one day and then one day he starts sharing his presence and the being that creates an energy field indeed it is sharing he has come home and he starts calling others who are still wandering in the darkness to home to illness Remember the teaching of the way. Be not a seeker anymore. You have been a seeker for lives and lives. It is time to wake up from the slumber of seeking. I teach you the way. Instead of seeking, start being, start living. In the pursuit of seeking alone, you are missing the opportunity to live. Stop seeking and start living. Sometimes I wonder, when will you start? living. Therefore, stop seeking and start living. Can we celebrate the birth and death anniversaries of Buddhas? In a way we cannot and in a way we can. We can because only a Buddha really understands what life is, what death is. 
you have a mind. Mind of four corners. Mind operates through the space that we call mind. It operates through intellect. It operates through ego sense. And it operates through the storehouse, the memory. But mind on its own cannot work. It is a subtle mechanism. It needs certain instruments. Body provides that instrument through its organs of perception and action. And when you are living suddenly one day your breathing stops but not desire. desires continue but breathing stops you remain in the cycle of birth and death you call this as death as an as a result of this death when suddenly the breathing has stopped but not the desire, you have to come back into the life. This is a cycle. You do not understand. This remains a prison to you. Buddha really understands this. So his breathing continues but the desiring stops. Desiring comes to a cessation, but the breathing continues. He has attained this in his lifetime. Know this as moksha or salvation or transcendence. You can celebrate the birth of Buddha because he understands this. He lives like a bridge between birth as one shore and death as the other shore. When body disappears and you enter into another realm, Alma aware. Indeed, he bridges both birth and death for this reason, we can celebrate and really we must celebrate such occasions. And we cannot because birth and death are only of the everyday. Body is composed of five elements. It is humans. It lives for a certain period of time and then disappears. Man is thought, thought is ephemeral. It's like a wave rising on the surface of the eternal ocean. That which lives for a certain period of time is born one day and then dissolves and the day. Buddha is neither of these. Body and mind comes into existence one day and then dissolves to continue the cycle of birth. Awakened one is the one who is dissolved into the ocean of eternity. Desires vanish. But the breathing continues. One who is eternal has experienced both shores. Like a river, he continues to flow between these two shores as birth and death. Between these two shores, he flows like a current of consciousness. His every action, every word, overflows 
this awareness. On such an occasion when the entire existence has joined the celebration, so that the message of the existence continues to overflow for certain time, we can therefore celebrate and yet not. You can if you are aware of this. A Buddha is always aware of this. Indeed, he is not celebrating instead his celebration. With this I extend love to all those who have sent messages from world over names of thousands. Through this gratefulness I acknowledge your personal message. Maybe you all continue, may you all continue to grow in awareness and I will continue to share my presence till eternity lasts in myriad forms and beings, in myriad forms and beings. Love each one of you beyond time and space and the message wraps with wind like the fragrance of eternal lotus. And message wafts with the winds like the fragrance of eternal lotus. Remember human body is form and remains conditioned by time and space. Body is humus. Thus human body assumes birth and attains to death. However, a Buddha is eternal beyond time and space, unconditioned by anything finite. Buddha would remain eternal beyond birth and death. Therefore, that which is eternal beyond time and space, this is your essential nature, your beings, your innermost being. This is the message, this is the blessing, this is the aspiration of Tao Shobhaka for each one of you. Tao Shobhaka may or may not be Certainly you will attain to your ultimate flowering one day. Allow this journey to continue with certitude. For us, such is the promise of the existence for each one of you, the entire creation. I ask you to be happy, not because everything around you is good, and you have a cause to be happy. Your happiness should be an inner function, not bound by anything that is ephemeral. Instead, I ask you to be happy because through Tausha Buddha, the existence, is lending you a new light, a new vision. You can see beauty and ugliness, joy and sorrow, and flowers in place of thorns. This is the way existence is creating a new software to be installed in you through its awakened one. Therefore, start living, stop seeking, eat when you are hungry, and while eating, be utterly there in it. Become the eating. Let eating be your prayer. 
fall asleep when tired when body needs rest but really fall asleep totally and if no dreams happen this is the total sleep sleep then becomes a prayer a dreamless sleep is meditation a dreamless sleep is meditation sleep totally whatever you do do it totally be into it totally forget all about seeking seeking god instead i teach you living godliness live in godliness all seekings are future oriented seeking begins tomorrow and that never comes and living happens now this very moment therefore start living is still you want to know what is my message if so then you are still asleep i am here to wake you with each word and message shake you to your root infuse in you a yearning so that your journey homeward or inward begins you need to understand the essence of the word a state beyond the world limits their essence it is a totally different realm normally words emerge out of the world fullness and words when they emerge from inner emptiness or bliss they emerge from a state beyond worldlessness this is buddha state and this is his problem also when using the words with meanings belonging to his realm and you understand it you add your meaning to the words then what is the solution uses feelings as a communicative way only when nothing works once you start using the words you have gone into an unending process use words to communicate and then more words to explain further what did you mean and never comes i found the way of feeling blended with breath modulation then words become irrelevant feelings blended with voice breath modulation creates an energy field that communicates therefore use the breath modulation as a means of communication a buddha is friendly to each one of you he is a physician a physician is around the patient only as long as patient needs him the moment inner healing has happened but there is no good around you and it is erroneous to see that one has attained enlightenment better to see realization has happened and the moment ultimate has happened satiation is total 
you need not even live, but you do, because your presence is a catalyst for many along the path. A Buddha, an awakened one, does nothing. Just as in a process of a chemical reaction there are catalysts, simply their presence does something. Does light do anything to the flower in its blossom? No, light becomes a catalyst and in its presence, the petals, something happens within the womb, within the heart of the flower and it starts opening its petal slowly and slowly. So too, Buddha is a catalyst in your life and his presence creates an awakening, creates an opening for something to happen. Although he need not live after the realization of enlightenment, but he does. Because his presence is a catalyst for many along the path. Therefore, I ask you to be happy. Not because everything is good and you have a cause to be happy. Instead, I ask you to be happy because existence is lending you a new vision and you can see beauty in ugliness, joy in sorrow, flowers in place of thorns. This is the way existence creates a new software in you, a new awakening in you. Still, one more thing, can one attain to a state of samadhi while living? Yes, it can happen. You have to understand the mechanism first. You have a mind which operates through four corners, the space that mind provides, the intellect, the ego sense and the memory, the storehouse. Mind operates through these. But it uses the instruments of the body, the organs of action and perception. Together the body and the mind creates a prison and you continue to live guided by the memory, the past, which is no more or the aspiration for future which is not yet. And you go on missing this very moment. To live moment to moment and to live with momentary things are diametrically opposite. Man lives with momentary things. That is why there is so much misery because Whatsoever is momentary is not going to satiate you. By the time you become aware that it is there, it is gone. Life is almost a flux because it is continuously moving and slipping out of your hand. Nothing is certain, nothing is stable. Everything is in a constant movement. So there is a vast difference between living moment to moment and living with momentary things. Momentary things means that which is ephemeral in nature. So body and the mind together creates a prison and you continue to live into it. Guided by the mind, using the instrument, of the body and the mind, instrument provided by the body. The moment you come out of this prison, the moment your breath continues, but the desiring, the seeking, 
comes to an end. Life is as it is. The moment desiring vanishes, seeking vanishes, you start living this very moment totally with awareness into it. Breathing continues. You come out of that state. This is salvation. This is moksha. You can get a glimpse of it. And as the livingness continues, moment to moment, you can retain this state. Then you are in the body, but the body is not in you. The two are separate. There comes a separation between the body and the being. And that state is Samadhi. Yes, you can attain to this in lifetime. The word Samadhi comes from two, it's of Sanskrit origin, it comes from two words. And the process of joining two words in Sanskrit is known as Sanghi. So when you want to understand the etymology, the origin of the word, you have to break that bond. That bond that connects the two words together. It comes from the two words sam or sam and bhi. Sam means that which is equanimity. Equanimity. Remains undisturbed under all circumstances and situation. When the situation is favorable, you are happy. When the vice versa happens, you are miserable. When neither the misery nor the happiness, neither the pain nor its nor anything else disturbs you. Nothing disturbs you. You are in a state beyond the body and mind. There is equanimity. And that state of equanimity is described in Vedanta as bliss anam. And he refers to a state of meditativeness. Firstly, this state of equanimity has come. You are aware of this. You continue to live your life moment to moment with this awareness. This becomes the way of your life. This is the Dhyan, the mindfulness, the awareness. So this becomes your consciousness way of life. Sama Dhi. Sama also refers a state when there is a constant celebration goes on. When there is equanimity, you start hearing the whispers of the unknown. The moment there is equanimity, you start hearing the Whispers of the unknown. Nahi lubhati hai dil ko ye guru ki awaz. Nahi lubhati hai dil ko ye guru ki awaz. Mere kano me ab sada fizaon se aati hai. Mere kano me ab sada fizaon se aati hai. These dancing bells, the sun does not appear to me anymore. Mere kano me ab sada, the sound, the whispers that come to my ears, that please my ears, come riding the, the wings of the wind. Nahi lubhati hai dil ko, 
ये गुरु की आवाज ये गुरु की आवाज ये गुरु की आवाज मेरे कानों में अब सदा मेरे कानों में अब सदा से आती है फिजान से आती है देन योर ब्रेथ बिकम्स योर प्रे देन योर ब्रेथ बिकम्स अ प्रे देन योर ब्रेथ बिकम्स अ मेडिटेशन एंड यू कंटिन्यू टू ब्रीथ But the desiring mind has vanished. This state is a state of salvation, a state that continues to live on, and you continue to stay in that state is salvation. And when it comes, you get a glimpse. It is samadhi, a state of equanimity. then nothing disturbs you remember you cannot make your abode in this momentary world on a shifting ground even when you have to build a house in the the dirt the soil the ground on which the house is to be built is moving you cannot on a shifting ground you cannot make a house If you make your abode on a shifting ground sand, it is bound to collapse. Certainly, it will collapse one day, and that is what is happening when it collapses, which is absolutely inevitable. And this is going to happen any moment, and then you cannot live in peace. you fall in love and there is fear about whether love is going to remain tomorrow or not grips you seek that which is eternal remember desire is for something ephemeral and it cannot be fulfilled it goes on and on and let this desiring mind come to cessation what else do you want a state of equanimity when there is when nothing disturbs you neither pain so you move from the statement of chanakya the birth is pain the death is pain the life is pain but he adds a, a methodology to it therefore a smart chakra therefore remain awake buddha says life is bliss death is bliss and the we is blissness on this day when the entire existence celebrates the descent of night let it manifest let it continue to shower in myriad ways sometimes through silence sometimes through the words other times just a subtle presence the moment you start moving within something happens and remember this presence that happens to you through words is contagious remember a buddha is contagious once you allow him to give him a freedom to enter you you cannot stop and one the light has entered even through a small people you can never remain the same the life has embarked on a new journey once again thanks to each one of you 
who has sent messages and these messages keep on pouring. Thank you to each one of you. May you continue to live in awareness until 